Everybody knows the tales of Robin Hood, that famous rebel who fought for justice and championed the oppressed English commoner against a rapacious Norman aristocracy. But far fewer people know the story of an obscure Saxon warrior, an actual historical figure whose life and exploits mirror those of that mythical outlaw to an astonishing degree. Let's take a look at a real flesh and blood hero, a man whose life was truly the stuff of legend. This is the story of Hereward the Wake. In order to understand what drove Hereward, we must first understand the chaotic and blood-soaked world of England in the late 11th century. In 1066, William the Conqueror invaded England and clashed with Harold Godwinson at the famous Battle of Hastings. It was a hard fight, but at the end of the day, the English king lay dead on the battlefield and with him died Anglo-Saxon England. It was the end of an era. The Norman conquest had begun. William and his Norman knights soon ruled the country with an iron fist, brutally oppressing their new Saxon subjects and savagely quelling any hint of rebellion. But Hereward was born a rebel. The son of an East Anglian nobleman, he found himself exiled from his ancestral home at the age of 18 by his own father, who had finally had enough of the young man's disobedience and unruly nature. Harewood went on to fight in battles and skirmishes from Ireland to Flanders, with tales being told of his engaging in such varied activities as wrestling with bears to rescuing princesses from unwanted marriages in his spare time. Whatever the veracity of these tales, it is certainly true that Hereward had made a name for himself, and his reputation as a courageous adventurer was spreading far and wide. But like the mythical Robin Hood who returned from the Crusades to find an oppressed and tyrannized England, he soon learned of the terrible fate that had befallen his native land. Harewood immediately left off his gallivanting through Europe, sailing back to England to find his family lands confiscated by the Normans and his brother's head on a spike outside his childhood home. Overcome with rage, he burst into the house, surprising a large group of Norman knights feasting at his father's table and allegedly killed over a dozen of them before rousing the peasantry to revolt and sending the remaining Normans fleeing from the scene. Harewood was proclaimed a savior by those he had liberated and was knighted on the spot by the abbot of the nearby monastery of Peterborough. The Normans, having regrouped and returned in greater numbers some days later, were eventually able to overwhelm the newly formed band of rebels and force their retreat, but not before Harewood killed several Norman knights of great renown who were sent to bring back his head to the now furious King William. It is said that Harewood, like Robin Hood, was a skilled archer and that he shot one of his pursuers, the Norman noble William de Warren, clean off his horse. Just as the legendary Robin Hood and his mythical Merry Men took up residence in Sherwood Forest, Harewood and his very real entourage of rebels and outlaws now made the Isle of Ely in the Fens of East Anglia their base of operations, made up of a maze of islands and rivers stretching across a vast marshy landscape the fens were a perfect area for the saxon rebels to wage a guerrilla war against their norman overlords time and time again king william would send his knights and men at arms into the fenlands to snuff out harewood's rebellion and each time they would be ambushed and sent running Upon hearing that the Abbey of Peterborough, where he had been knighted some years before, had been captured by the Normans and that its abbot had been replaced by a wicked and unjust usurper, Harewood retook the abbey and chased off the Norman occupiers. He is even said in some accounts to have returned to the mistreated and impoverished monks the treasures which the Normans had appropriated. Robin Hood was apparently not the first English hero to rob from the rich and give to the poor. Harewood's rebellion was now starting to gain notoriety across the country and he was joined by a small army led by the ousted Saxon nobleman Morcar, former Earl of Northumbria. King William, seeing these two rebels join forces, finally sent a massive force to the Fens in the year 1071 to quash Harewood's rebellion once and for all. 
the Normans proceeded to build an immense causeway in order to reach the rebel stronghold, but their army was so enormous that it collapsed beneath the weight of the multitude of armor-laden soldiers. The Normans then tried to frighten the Saxons from their fortress by erecting a wooden tower outside its walls and placing atop it a witch who hurled curses at the defenders night and day. But the crafty Hareward ruined this unorthodox plan by sneaking out of the besieged fortress and setting fire to the structure, toppling both the tower and its apparently supernatural occupant. It's even recorded that Harewood disguised himself as a humble peasant, sneaking into the Norman camp and acting as a spy for the rebel forces. The Saxons held out doggedly against their Norman besiegers for some time, but all good things must eventually come to an end. And so it was that a treacherous monk was bribed by the Normans to reveal a safe path to the Isle of Ely, and the fortress was finally overrun by an overwhelming Norman attack and the rebels were defeated. Whilst Morcar was captured at Ely, it is recorded that Harewood managed to escape with some of his followers and continued his bold resistance to Norman rule. However, the ultimate fate of Harewood is not known, with some saying that he finally fled England like so many other dispossessed Saxon nobles, while others claim that he was eventually killed fighting for his homeland. Though a real man of flesh and blood, Harewood's incredible life seems to echo the tales of another medieval outlaw who exists primarily in our imaginations. Perhaps Robin Hood in all his romantic allure is a myth born from the gritty reality of men like Harewood the Wake, an amalgamation of several real-life rebels who resisted tyranny in their own times. In the end, whether fact or fiction, what matters is the enduring spirit these remarkable figures represent. A spirit that challenges oppression, that fights for justice, and that inspires hope in even the darkest of times.